Hi folks, welcome back to part two of my electric bicycle conversion video. In the first video, I converted this regular bike into an electric bike, but now I wanted to uh, make it even better. The challenge with the first time around was given that there's limited space on the bicycle, where should I put the battery? So I came up with this idea of installing a carrier in the back and then install a storage space for the battery where I placed three of 12 volt batteries in the back and then connect it to the uh, throttle. So it worked fine. I had lots of fun riding this bicycle. It's very powerful, but um, now I wanted to make it even better. I want to improve the drive range of the bicycle. I want to reduce the weight of the bicycle. So stay tuned. I'm going to walk you through the whole process and show you what I found to give this bicycle a nice upgrade. So the first item is the lithium ion battery pack. With this pack, it allows me to do so much more on the bicycle in terms of the limited space that the bicycle has for battery storage. Inside of this pack, there are 50 battery cells. The cells are the 18650 cells, the same battery cells that they use on the Model S Tesla. So this is an incredible technology in terms of battery improvement and packing more power density in a small package. The first advantage is, is the size. Comparing to these batteries, with a smaller size of this pack, it'll give you more possibility in terms of where to find the space to store the battery. So the second advantage is the weight itself. This particular battery weighs only five and a half pounds. Comparing to these three, these together weigh about 15 to 16 pounds. They're pretty heavy. With less amount of weight, the bicycle will use less energy. In addition, it can also increase the speed itself because it carries less weight. So the, the third advantage is, of course, the power density in this battery pack. This uh, pack holds 30 amp hours at 36 volts. So for a small package like this, holding 30 amp hours, that's incredible. To do a comparison in terms of lead acid battery, this particular battery here, is a 35 amp hour battery. As you can see, this thing is gigantic. It weighs about 25 pounds. It's very heavy and it's only 12 volts comparing to a 30 amp hour 36 volts here. So with this battery pack, I can do so much more. On the previous installation, I averaged about 35 minutes on these guys here. But with lighter weight, and more amp hours on this particular battery pack here, it's gonna at least triple the amount of runtime that I'm going to get out of this small package. So I can't wait to see how this is gonna work out. I went to TJ Maxx and I found this travel bag. So this travel bag fits this pack perfectly. In addition, it also has enough room to actually fit the controller as well. So if you have to pay for a battery case, you can end up paying quite a bit of money uh, on a pre-made battery case. But in this case, I got this for under $10. So all I need to do to install this onto a bicycle is to sew Velcro strap along the two edges like so, so that I can install it on the horizontal frame of the bicycle. And then another Velcro strap here so I can connect it to the vertical frame of the bicycle. It fits perfectly and I think it's going to be beautiful on the bike. It's going to make the bicycle more appealing and seamless as well. So I just removed the extra accessories, the carrier and the battery storage case on the back. Now my bike looks like it's back to a regular bicycle. So now all I have to do is place my new battery case onto the frame here and we'll see how it's going to work out. So with this new battery, you do have to give it a new terminal port so that it can be compatible 
with the controller terminal port. So what I'm going to do is, since I don't have a port like this, I am going to give it new terminals on each side. And these are the pins that I'm going to use. So you might have other terminal connectors that you can use to wire the controller and the battery together, but I'm going to do this. Cool. This is my battery carrier. As I showed you earlier, this is a travel bag. So what I did is I sew the Velcro straps along the side. On, on both ends and also at the edge as well so that I can hook these guys up to the bicycle frame. Like we talked about earlier, I'm going to strap the case on like so. Uh, I can really tighten up. And then on the edge here, I will also hook it up to the, uh, the vertical frame here just to keep it stable so it doesn't like move but I'm riding it. You see how nice, nicely packed this, this is? It looks more appealing and it fits perfectly right onto the frame. Let's make the connection. This wire here comes from the electric motor if you purchase the same kit. And then the, it goes through the uh, blue and yellow to the controller. All right. Boom, like that. Snap. And now you have the throttle. These two here are to the throttle. The throttle is the green, black, and red. And then there's a switch to the throttle that is blue and yellow. Here's the throttle part. It says input. And you just connect them like so. The switch to the uh, ignition. Here it says power locks. All right, so now let's turn this baby on and see if it's going to work. Okay, folks, so this is what my battery looks like. It looks more seamless. It fits the bike perfectly. I no longer have the uh, carrier and that big case on the back of the bike. The weight now is more centralized in the middle and it's gonna make it much smoother and better ride all together. So before we get on the road, let's do a little testing. I have this bike on the uh, bike stand, so it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to switch this on, boom, like so. It's at 37 volts. And turn on the accelerator. Slowly first, as you can see. Wow, amazing. So it worked perfectly. The other cool feature about this bicycle conversion is that you don't lose the original ability of your bicycle. If you don't want to go electric, all you need to do is switch the throttle off, right? And then uh, you can pedal, okay? Like so, and you can get your exercise, you can ride or whatever, or if you uh, run out of electricity, you can, still, you can still pedal. The reason why you can go manual or electric is because of the electric motor. The electric motor has this uh, sprocket here, as you can see, and it's also a free wheel as well. When the wheel moves like so, the chains only move. When you turn on the motor to the electric mode, the motor here starts to kick in. Look at that. See that? You have a uh, dual mode here, either manual or elect electric so uh, you don't have to go electric all, all the time and if you do want to go electric all you have to do is turn it on and go electric wow i can't wait to take this on the road take some measurement see how fast this thing can go and how long i can actually ride this bike before the battery runs out Nineteen. 
so I had a chance to take this bike for a spin like I expected this is a incredible improvement the battery pack does really give it a great power boost in terms of performance it is much better I don't have to worry about the weight behind me especially when I turn the corner I don't have to really think about balancing the bike and uh, it's just move along as I move along because the weight now is in the center in terms of the battery case it sits perfectly between my legs it does not interfere with my legs at all as you can see I have it securely locked so when I move it moves around just like the bike so overall this is a great improvement i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope to see you again soon thanks